Oh man, guys. So one of the big things that we have to talk about right now is going to be Ergo and a soft fork proposal uh, that would change the emissions, uh, change the emission rate of the coin. Now I've been pretty high on Ergo uh, for quite some time. I think that the development has been going in the proper direction. You see use cases there with their uh, NFTs actually being workable and functioning good on their Ergo auction house. You see the launches of their decentralized exchange on the Ergo decks with future implementation of Cardano coming. You see a lot of good stuff happening. This is concerning, I think, uh, to me personally. Uh, I don't like what I'm seeing here. I've seen this with a lot of other coins in the past, and I am also fully prepared to take the brunt of being on the side of the negative here uh, for this proposal. So what is this proposal? It's gonna be EIP0027. And let's go ahead and talk about it. So, uh, Basically, this is the Reddit thread. There's going to be uh, the Ergo Forum thread that we're going to talk about. There's two threads there. And then there is the less popular yet just as relevant uh, vote no option here for uh, for the Reddit thread as well. So um, let's just kind of get you guys caught up to date. I was trying to figure out exactly, and this is why I'm a little bit behind. So you guys are going to have to help me understand the math here um, because I don't really understand what the initial impact is. It looks pretty significant uh, as far as the initial impact on mining rewards. So currently after the last epoch, we went from 67.5 uh, erg to for mining rewards to per block to 66 erg per block of mining rewards and uh, that just happened so right now you're at 66 erg uh, per block uh, and then of course that gets dispersed out based on the amount of shares to the mining pool there's also something else to note here just to uh, give you guys like an idea as far as we understand, previously on Ergo, it was supposed to not have mining pools. At this point, it does have mining pools. And the reason this is important is because what's going to happen with the voting for this process is that you are essentially going to vote via miners. Now, the problem with voting via miners when you have mining pools active is that the vote ends up going from the mining pools. We had this sort of a similar situation, I suppose, with EIP, whatever the big one was with Ethereum, uh, 1559. And that it, it's kind of the same concept. This is a little bit more impactful because it, the votes will be directly related to uh, how the miners decide and unfortunately what that means for the individual miner is not much because unfortunately like you're going to be mining to a pool the pools will have the majority of the vote stake and therefore the pool operators will be making the primary decisions in this case uh, and I think that's important because one of the arguments that's going on here is like Ergo and its principles of being for the people, uh, not for the developers, not for those in charge, not for the mining pool ops, that sort of thing. Um, and I think that that's just from a principle standpoint important to push out. But this is an emissions retargeting soft fork. The author is Kushti and it was proposed on December 17th, 2021, and last edited on December 20th, 2020. Now, I did hop into Discord and try to get some more clarification. I don't have anything at this time. What I do have is like a few updates and where it's sitting, like it's still being discussed. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm waiting on more information. But let's go ahead and get the information that we do have, right? So starting from block 699,393, first block of the 684th epoch, new emission rules applied on top of rules described in the Ergo white paper. Before end of the current emission, 
If block reward is not less than 15, send 12 erg from it to the remission contract. Otherwise, block reward R is less than 15 erg, send R negative three from it to the remission contract. After end of the current emission from block 2,080,800, pay three erg each block from remission contract. So here's where it's kind of hard to like parse through all of this. So long-term security of ergo protocol, including crypto economic security always has high priority. One of the hottest topics in this field is instability or stability of cryptocurrency protocols without the block reward. It was planned during the launch of ergo network that the end of emission uh, end of emission miners will be rewarded with transaction fees and also storage rent. However, it is hard to estimate yet how successfully will store uh, will storage rent replace emissions. Thus, it was proposed on the Ergo forum informally uh, to via a soft fork to prolong emissions with preserving total supply. This EIP is concluding previous discussions and provides details on the emission for the soft fork design and implementation. Now, if you guys recall, emissions were going to end pretty soon. I believe it was like 2027. And then all of the all of the ergo would be minted. And then at that point, essentially what you would have is just fees being paid out to the miners. So from the, the, the miners perspective, just fees would get paid out. What they want to do is extend the emissions and the amount of the exact amount of time was a little confusing. I, I've seen them say 18 to 20 years as opposed to the eight years, which almost doubles the time, but without increasing without increasing the total supply. So to do that, what they have to do is reduce the mining reward significantly. And what, what you start to run into obviously is here is that at the end of the day, what they're doing is messing with monetary policy. Now, we'll get into the negatives of that. We'll get into why people, the positives of that as well. This does go back to the same kind of principles that of course we talked about with EIP 1559. So where you stand on EIP 1559, in some ways, in principles, should probably tell you where you stand on EIP 27 for ERGA or ERG. That being said, uh, it's not, it. that's with the just purely messing with monetary policy portion, not necessarily the implementation because the implementation here, uh, you know, isn't going to be burning. Well, it sort of does. So this is where I'm not getting a lot of clarification and that I don't understand. And that is with the remission tokens where the miner is sending a portion over, right? So when I'm, when we're going through this there, the details are a little fuzzy. How much does the actual block reward reduce initially? And then from there, my understanding is it reduces negative three every epoch. Um, so here's the soft fork proposal. Um, so if block reward is not less than 24 erg, send 21 erg from it to the remission contract. Otherwise block reward R is less than 24, send R negative three erg from the remission contract with the following rules starting from block, blah, blah, blah. Uh, total remission fund then would be about 23,553,600 erg. So that'd be getting pulled out from the ecosystem as, be as best as I can tell. Um, <sighs> All right. So do you guys see where I'm getting into confusion here? Because what they haven't clearly stated, and this is what I'm trying to get information on is how much this impacts the 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 payout for miners right so uh for example for height six the reward is 75 minus three times this which equals 66 uh but for height 1 million reward 75 minus three times this which would equal the 27 erg So 
So how much does it actually reduce is kind of where I sit down and I don't understand uh, exactly. And then when it reduces, what is it? It's sending some of that as not a burn, but to a remission contract. So we have some people in chat helping out here a little bit. What is, so, okay. So Andrea says the first output should be protected by the same script in the numbers of ergo, and it should be the equal remaining miners reward. Yeah, so that still doesn't make sense. So we're talking about as clear as mud. So, yeah. So you're saying negative, we will lose 12 erg after the soft fork. So the initial reduction so the initial reduction for miners will be to the actual block reward will go from 66, I'm just saying if I understand this correctly. So if you say 12, it would go from 66 to uh, 54. And then it would decrease every epoch by three ergo from there. Then, okay. So then my next question is, which doesn't make sense, so if the block reward is, okay, if, if that's the block reward and it's 54, and then there's also the remission contract, it says in here, okay. So it says in here, let me pull this up again. Where was it? And this is where I guess clarity is a little difficult. So says in here that if the block reward is not less than 15, which would be the 54, send 12 erg from it to the remission contract. So is the 12 erg what you're talking about there is always going to go to the remission contract? Or is it now that the ergo is at 54, you take another 12 off of it? Do you understand where the confusion is? Like, it's not, so is it all just this remission contract that they're basically not burning, but sort of burning this 12 erg just from the, 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 the regular reduction. So it would be the 66 minus the 12. And then once we get down to, so it's just going to be 66 minus the 12, but that 12 ergo is still going into the contract. And then when it's 15, it goes down by three. So it's clearly just reduced mining rewards. Like from the miner's perspective, the block reward goes down to, goes down by 12 every epoch until it hits 15 and then it goes down by three every epoch. So regular reduction. So what we're talking about here from the miner's perspective, just so we're clear, because obviously the, the way they're doing it and writing about it with the remission contract is essentially saying that you would take the emission, like you would take this reduction and put it into the remission contract. But from the miner's perspective, all it really means is your mining reward is going down for the going down by 12 every epoch. And then once it hits 15, once the reward is down to 15, it goes down by three every epoch. And then, and then it's getting put into a contract. That is, how is that? So how is that? So, okay. So from the miner's perspective, that's what we're talking about right? And then they're locking the current reward, the additional, and then that's going to be pushed out further so that they can extend out, so that they can extend out the emissions from 2027 to 2057 or something like that, right? Whatever it was, I've seen various comments on, on all of that. So, here's what's weird. 
to me. That means that this ergo is still being minted. It's just putting, it's just being put into a contract to add to the block reward in the future. You see how this is like a little confusing? And if it's in that contract, that means it is technically accessible. And if you're already changing monetary policy, what's to stop them from changing the monetary policy later and accessing those funds within that contract? This is the problem from the get-go that I see, right? Um, and I understand that from their perspective or I, my, or well, my understanding is, is that there are, there is an inflation issue within Ergo. And that's what's trying to be solved. But to me, this just, yeah, this sounds exactly like Ethereum. Messing with monetary policy, post-contract, against the principles. Um, and that's kind of a problem. So from what I'm seeing, I understand this. Well, the chain would always be mineable. You mean that it would incentivize mining for longer because there would be a, a set block reward, right? So um, from what I can tell, most of this does, there is a, a lot of support for it. Um, and so I think like one of the positives here is that the miners are voting on it, but one of the downsides to miners voting on it is that because it is no longer, you know, one miner, one vote, like originally intended for Ergo, which that's already gone to the wayside. Uh, consideration for ASICs is pretty much like a possibility as well. And then on top of that, now we're messing with monetary policy to adjust for major inflation uh, that is causing, you know, the mining or well, the already mined rewards to be low. Uh, and then the way that they're adjusting the monetary policy is taking a portion of that and putting it into a contract. So you are actually still minting the, as far as I can tell, still minting the erg and then putting it into a, con a contract. It does. It's, it seems messy. It, doesn't seem to necessarily favor miners in general, other than being able to have block rewards for further out. Once again, like to me, it reeks of like, obviously because it's a, a an inflation issue, then the issue is, you know, maintaining the value of the ERG for the current holders of ERG. I'm kind of like, I think either way, it, there's trouble here. Okay. So <laughs> to me, I think if you don't do it, there there's a trouble with the major inflation, right? And if you do do it, there's trouble because you've gone against the principles. I think that like, no way you cut this cookie. Does it end up going well? So I'm, I'm just super cautious around this at this point, but all of the arguments that are for it go along these lines. I vote yes for soft fork. It will lead to scarcity for its hold. Miners will hold it most than sell. Buyers will buy more and hold it too. Other devs will feel confident to use the network to build dApps. This argument, I don't know any support for. Um, will be good in marketing. All of those points are behind every poor decision that Ethereum's ever made. All of those points are behind every single bad decision Ethereum has made. You guys need to keep that in mind. All of these points are behind every single poor decision Ethereum has made. 
And that's the problem. Let's go ahead and go into the vote no against points. We'll talk about a little bit here. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried about the platform. So, uh, EIP 27 is a proposal to change the emission past the original eight years as stated in the white paper. I am surprised this is even being discussed. This is by fanboy XX nine, uh, on Reddit. I don't know his credentials. So, uh, there could be incorrect data here. We'll try to parse it through. I tried to do as much research as possible as I could. Obviously I only had this morning to do it. So I can make mistakes as well. Uh, the monetary policy cannot change in a decentralized money system. Is it okay to change the monetary emission of Bitcoin? Ergo should be above all this. Did my research and went through the Ergo white paper, the teaser, the Ergo manifesto, and the YouTube uh, video here. We cannot change the emission curve. It is part of the social contract between the devs, users, and miners of the protocol. It is an open contract. The miners do work and get a certain reward as promised. Number seven, contractual money. In our opinion, the overwhelming majority of use cases for, this is from the white paper, for public blockchains, even those that claim to provide general purpose decentralized world computer, are for financial applications, which do not require require Turing completeness. For instance, if an Oracle writes down non-financial data into the blockchain, such as temperature, this data is usually used further in a financial contract. All right. So I believe this, this is quote uh, from the Reddit article. I believe the snapshots above demonstrate the hypocrisy. I don't know that I agree with that, but we'll, we'll kind of get into that in a bit. Um, the manifesto and white paper talks about Ergo being a platform for contractual money. Who's going to take this seriously if the most important and fundamental contract of the system is broken by the project's core developers? It would turn into an extremely ironic white paper with how it, sh how it shows the promised emission curve and just below talks about contractual money while later the community breaks this promise. The main developers issued 93409000 hundred and thirty two coins in May of 14th of 2019 to be allocated for minor rewards with the emission curve ending in eight years. That is the contract. You change it, you break it is what he's saying here. Uh, some may argue that this is not an actual change to the contract because it's somehow voluntary. Now that is a point, right? The miners will all vote on whether or not they agree to put parts of the rewards into a small magic box where we, what, which will remit it back to them late at a later date. So that is, that is what's going on here. There's a, they'll use a, they'll use a contract to basically take a portion of block reward, which has already been minted, move that into a contract to then be paid out once again, back to the miners at a later date, therefore extending the length of block rewards outside of fees that go to miners. That's the clarification here. So then the cut is like we said, the negative 12, negative 12. All right, so let's go ahead and go into it. The truth is, this is not fair and not voluntary in any way is what he says. Um, I always tell my kids, fair is not a thing. There's nothing's fair, right? That's not a term you're allowed to use. That's not an argument. Fairness is not really an argument in my general vocabulary. That being said, let's talk about the not voluntary portion of this, which um, I think there is a point here, which is that like we've talked about, because Ergo has mining pools, the decision doesn't go to the individual miners necessarily. It either goes to the very large solo miners or to the pools themselves. They make the decisions. You and I don't make these decisions. We aren't influential enough to make these decisions as far as from a voting perspective, if we are voting based on where the miner is pointing their hash power. All right. So not voluntary, I think I could agree there, but the white paper states that minor rewards, which means a reward belonging to the miners, nobody can take this reward away from them, not the devs, not the community, and not even another miner. <sighs> so then the discussion is, right, if the miners are making the choice, 
just in theory, right? If the miners are making the choice to move along with the soft fork, then the miners are not having the block reward taken away from them, but they are giving up or voluntarily giving that to, to the network. The question would be is once again, who's making this vote in reality? Is it each individual miner or is it really just the mining pools? And then how are the pools incentivized? Uh, seeing that pools have low fees yet they are building up their wallets, etc. Typically mining pools are more in the hodl state. This is coming from being a mining pool up uh, in the past. You just hold a whole bunch of it. Because of that, I would say that as a mining pool, I would want the mining rewards to be reduced to then thereby inflate or, or increase the value of my holdings. That's how I, as a, uh, find what I would find as a pool up beneficial to me, right, in general. Um, but, you know, that could be said for the individual miners as well. We can kind of go through that. To implement this soft work would be a t tyranny of the majority over the rights of the minority. Uh, the minor reward is right, is a right for every single miner. I think we've kind of already talked about this, right? Like, because the vote comes from the miner, technically it doesn't go against the white paper because, you know, from their perspective, the miners are making the vote on this, Okay. Uh, that's how I feel about it. Now he does go through like founder quotes here. No function or monetary policy changes are possible if no bugs are there. Is major inflation a bug? Should we take all of the founders sayings to be, you know, the Bible for ergo or erg? I mean, I don't know. Quote, potentially ergo is not worse as digital gold than Bitcoin because of limited supply cap, fixed monetary policy, and proof of work. And then, quote, and uh, Ethereum is not so good, I believe, as ergo. Bitcoin is a store of value, right, as digital gold because its, sim it's supply is not limited and monetary policy is not fixed and can be changed at any moment. I mean, you got to be careful what you're going to say, I suppose. <laughs> I, <laughs> but uh, it does do a slippery slope to blockchain without work, uh, is what he goes on here. This is the next paragraph. If some type of community majority can pressure the miners into putting their reward into a magic box, then proof of work, instead of being a part of a social contract, turns into a social policy that can change to become anything. The community could, in the future, take even more from the minor rewards for all sorts of schemes, such as community coin staking or founding of some kind. Eventually, the community can take all minor rewards and fees and then turn the project into proof of stake. The supply cap can even be removed since a precedent has been made that there is no social contract and it's just policy. In short, EIP-27 emission change could set a very bad precedent that could lead to further bad things down the road. This will not help the price, it will look really bad. So the price of Ergo, 10X in a year, what's the problem here? Crypto's price regularly two to eight times in a very short periods. Inflation is most negotiable, uh, is mostly negotiable compared to the massive demand spikes that occur in crypto markets. Trying to alter the price by tweaking the supply is playing into supply side economics and it's a fallacy. Nothing will raise the market cap except for new demand. It also signals a bad message. One, the project has no fundamentals and anything can change. Number two, no long term belief in project or future demand. So community is resorting to supply side economics instead. Number three, Three, no long-term belief in project future utility and transaction fee generation for miners. So the system has to be reconstructed. Now, this is an important note that we should talk about because they want to extend out the mining rewards. Now, part of it, extending out the base block reward does signal that they don't think that the fees alone will be ready to compensate miners and keep the network secure past 2027 without additional block rewards being implemented. That does signal 
an issue, right? Like keep that in mind. That is a good point there. It's clearly not decentralized like Bitcoin and Bitcoin emission cannot change. <sighs> Minor future incentives. There is an argument going around that there will not be enough incentives for mining after the eight year emission. That's what I was talking about. But let's ask ourselves, what is enough incentives? Enough incentives for what? For security? If Ergo doesn't get very big after eight years, why would we need so much security anyway? In, in such a case, it will probably be used for low volume, non-critical financial applications anyway. You don't need Bitcoin level security for that. Secondly, even with low hash rate, it's still possible to have a very secure system with proof of work. First of all, we can always put the Ergo block header hashes into another blockchain with stronger security and secure Ergo that way until it gains hash rate security on its own. You can piggyback on top of Bitcoin security and just be just as secure as it. I think there's some fallacy in his argument there, but. Secondly, the community and exchanges don't need to immediately jump over the longest chain if it's clearly an attack that is forking the chain from a few blocks. Instead, everyone says with the chain they subjectively saw first and continue, continue treating it as the canocial <laughs> chain. Uh, only if the attack persists being the longest chain for a few days does the community concede defeat and reluctantly and gradually move over to the longest chain so as to maintain long-term objectivity this track drastically increases the security and cost of attack reducing the incentive to attack and makes most 51 percent attacks a minor inconvenience proof of work is more secure than people think 51 percent attacks are not fatal so is it worth changing fundamentals for no real gain in security just to avoid minor inconvenience? And he says no, but oh, I think now he says, I believe that instead of signaling a lack of confidence, we should just work hard to ensure that Ergo has a lot of utility and generates lots of transaction fees for miners in the future. Having a deadline of eight years is a good thing and would probably increase the chances that the work will be done. In six years, Ergo will be able to say it has zero inflation. What other project can say that? Why should we throw that away? I understand that currently the inflation is relatively high. Now I'm hearing massive in my chat just for people that aren't reading the chat. But we should all remember that sound money is more than just low inflation. It's about not having technocrats playing or manipulating the monetary pol policy uh, in principle. Now, um, we can go in through some of the arguments against this. I'll try to get through them. <sighs> so, all right, let's see if we can get this. Let's try and remember the ones that work the best, right? So maybe I missed something is a long debate after all. But in the back and forth, you mentioned that the coin issuance contract is part of the social contract. But as far as I can tell, it really isn't. Section two lays out what you could call Ergo's social contract. The subsequent sections are method, uh, more method than promise. So I don't see section 6.1 as a contract, but as a described implementation. If section 6.1, and this is where we're getting into, ah, man. So this is where you, I don't like these types of arguments because it's, it's, um, what do you call it? Um, it's nitpicky, right? It's, it's going through and, and saying like, well, it's not actually in this con. That's not actually part of the social contract, even though it's in the white paper. And it's like, okay, well, let's get to a better argument. All right. So Wilford says that he came around to it. The proposal is more consistent with those ideals and current monetary policy and that it supports minor security decentralization over a longer period of time. So the other headings in Ergo's social contract are decentralization first, open, permissionless, and secure, creative for regular people, a platform, a platform for contractual money, and long-term focus. So he's saying that the long-term focus uh, means that like extending this out is a good thing. So he says the I, I guess I can see it there. Um, let's go ahead and go down there arguing a little bit more i believe where was it down here 
the big issue that everybody agrees on was this one. So I do think you're onto something with the claims about censorship. I reread what you wrote a few times and have to come to agree with your position regarding a minor having the right to the ERG and the emission contract. Okay. Remember, this is kind of like where we get into the weirdness. So, and I know this, this stream's going on super long, but where we get into the weirdness with this one is that there is a form of proposed or accused censorship by the fact that the block reward, uh, reducing the block reward, right? as opposed to taking a portion of the block reward and sending it to a contract means that there's like a weird censorship problem here. And that seems to be like the biggest problem that everybody's kind of agreeing on, or at least like moving towards. So, um, from Ergo Social Contract, anyone can join the network and participate in the protocol without permission. Unlike the traditional financial system, no bailouts, blacklists, or forms of discrimination should be possible on the core level of the Ergo protocol. Insider advantage should be minimized. And again, from the social contract, um, in case of intentional violation of any of these principles, the result, res resulting protocol should not be called Ergo. If this change is pushed, miners that are unwilling will have their transactions effectively censored. A fork should occur. Real Ergo will be the one that did not accept EIP 27. And those that accept the change will lose the rights to the name as per the social contract. Uh, he thinks that this is the strongest argument. Okay. So this argument here is just saying that nobody could account for, you know, what would happen at the to Ergo later on at the very start. Uh, of it um it just i mean this is all math and if you're a developer just real quickly just like if you're a developer and you know you do math for a living and you're calculating out your total supply and the minor reward etc I feel like you would pay a lot of attention, a, a lot of attention to that and would be able to foresee, you know, maybe things like inflation issues. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.